Hello everybody, it's Jake and welcome to day six of the Learn SketchUp tutorial series. Today we're going to be going over the Follow Me tool. That's this one right here. It shows a little arrow inside of this like C 3D model uh, C right there. So by using this tool, we will be able to take geometry and then follow along a path where we take or, or where we extrude that uh, geometry. So to kind of show you what I mean, I'm just going to draw a rectangle real quick here. I'm just going to pull this out like that. I'm just going to bring it up with the push-pull tool. And it doesn't matter. Let's just bring it up 24 inches. And then I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to take a, uh, a, a surface and I'm going to wrap it around this entire uh, square here. So if I draw a little uh, square here, let's just do this. Okay. And I want to wrap this around this, uh, this bigger rectangle. How you would do that is you go to the Follow Me tool. And then as you hover over uh, these planes, this one will light up. This is the one we want. So we just click that and we hold down on it. And then we drag it along these, this plane right here. See as we're pulling it. And you'll see that the red line highlights where you're going. So if I wanted to, I could actually go down right here, come back that way, and then come up here. Okay, so I'm going to undo that real quick. Again, you can also just click once. You don't need to hold it down. You can just drag it as well. I just hold it down out of habit. So, and then you release. Okay, so we'll undo that real quick. And now the other thing I'm going to show you is how to uh, do the follow me tool, but pre-select the surface that we want it to follow. So what you can do is just click this one right here, the top, then go up to the follow me tool or use your shortcut. So click that and then just click this one right here and boom, it'll follow along that pre-selected surface. So again, if I were to do now, I, I do need to make sure that this, um, this plane that we draw is lined up with the, um, the line that we're going to be following. Um, I guess the better word to use is edge, the edge we're going to be following. So if I actually were to try and take it this way, for instance, if I tried to pull it like that, it wouldn't work. I'd have to go um, across this way first, but I couldn't like go down right here or that way. If I did want to go this way, I could always uh, push this back like that a little bit and then pull that as well and just get rid of that line there. And then I could go this way if I wanted to, to uh, change what I was going to be doing. So I'll just... Oh. Actually, I had a surface pre-selected. Follow me. There we go. And I could go that way. I'm going to show you that on the shed for those that are building the shed because we do have to actually do something similar to that because of the way that our shed lines up. Okay. So I'm quickly going over uh, just the ways you can use the follow me. Uh, just separately over here real quick for those that are here not to build the shed but to learn how to use the follow me tool. So there's one more way of doing the follow me, and that is by, if I, if I just select the tool and I haven't pre-selected a surface, if I click here and then I realize I'm actually just going to go all the way around this uh, edge right here, what I can do is just hit Alt and whatever uh, surface that I hover over, it'll go all the way across the edge of that surface, and then I can just click my mouse and it'll finish that off. Okay, and that's really good for if we have for instance, let's say we wanted to uh, chop something out. So if I do a line right here, I do a, a, a little triangle there. Then I use the follow me tool. I'm just going to use my shortcut. And I select that there. Then I hold down alt and I click there. You can see that it cut that away. So it's also, it's not just great for adding geometry, but it, you can delete geometry as well. Okay, so let's apply our new learned skills of the follow me tool to our shed that we've been building. So we want this to wrap around this uh, stone veneer. We want it to wrap around. We want it to come out about six, let's say six inches. So let's go ahead and we're going to have an issue here because if we were to draw our, um, our rectangle here, and I'm just going to come out 12 here just because I'm going to actually extrude it away later just to go through the process twice. I'm going to uh, line this up here, bring this here. So if I wanted to, because we already have this um, this extrusion here, 
it's not going to actually be flush with this. So if I try and use the follow me tool, then I bring this out and I let go, you'll see that this area right here is kind of messed up. Well, it's missing. And so what we're just going to do real quick, just push that back out of our way. If you did the trim on yours, yeah, just push it back and we'll pull it back out a little bit later. In fact, I'm just going to come out six so we don't have to worry about extruding any later. Uh, let's do four. Yeah, four is fine. And we'll come up, line it up. So now we're going to use the follow me tool. Now with this, because we don't want this to go all the way around, we can't use the method that we uh, where we select just the plane, right? So if I were to select this pre-plane, select the follow me tool and click that, it'll go all the way around, it'll cover our door. So we can't do it that way. So we just have to do it the manual way, which is just selecting your follow me tool, clicking on it, and then dragging it out and around. Make sure to keep those edges. Don't let anything go awry. Like don't, don't go up this way. Bring it right there and then just release. Now on yours, if you do get a, uh, if this surface is missing at the end, just go ahead and fill that in. Sometimes it does that and it can be annoying. So that's one way of doing it. But as I said, you don't, you can always pre-select. It's just easy if you pre-select the full surface, but you actually can pre-select your path if you want. So you could just pre-select these lines right here. And then I can use the follow me tool and then click it right there. And that works as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add materials to this, but I knew in advance that I wanted this to be stone materials. So the faster way to have done that would have actually been to add the materials first. So if I just come up here, hold down alt to grab this and then hit that there. And then just for due diligence, hit this side, right? Now, when we drag this, it'll actually give us stone all the way around and see, we only had to color two surfaces instead of doing all the, all the surfaces that were created when we did the follow me. So select the follow me and drag it around, around and around and around and let go. So that made it quite easy. All right, I'm gonna show you one more trick and that is going to be how to fold on an axis rotation. Well, it's how to rotate, but uh, it's kind of cool uh, because usually we just deal in the 90 degrees of these uh, different axes, right? So you're usually just rotating along a, um, a X, Y, or Z axis. So if I were to rotate here, right now we're getting the X and then we're gonna, we're, we could rotate along this plane as well. Let's get to go red, there we go. Right, so usually those are how we use uh, our axes, especially in construction. But let's say that we wanted to, you know, fold an origami. Let's say we wanted to fold along this line right here, and this was the plane that we wanted to use. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna select this surface right here. This is the surface that we're gonna be rotating. Then you're gonna go up to your rotate tool, so select that. And then you'll see that we can lock on these different uh, planes right here but we just want to fold along this edge right here. So how you do that is you want to click on this point right here and hold down on your mouse. So hold down on it, come up right there, release on this point, and then you can come out here to choose your handle. This is, you know, if there's a reference point out here that you want to click to, I'm just going to click from right here because it's lined up with that corner there. And then you rotate from there and you can set your angle Right there at the bottom on the right, you'll see, I can set my angle to 45 degrees. So I just move my mouth around the microphone. It's probably a cutout. But yeah, now you have that awesome, uh, that, that fold right there, instead of using the basic three axes. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I also teach Ruby programming and GIMP and some graphic design tutorials. So go ahead and check those out if you're interested now or anytime in the future and perhaps learning some programming. Again, my name is Jacob Williams. Thanks for being here today. Like the video, share, comment if you have any questions, and you have a wonderful evening.